Guys, I've got an awesome video for you today. I am sitting here with a great Doug Lee, the lead vocalist and the drummer at Aborn for the metal band Siren. What's up? <laughs> How y'all doing? Guys, we are going to go through the recording process. I've got a ton of tips, or you guys have a ton of tips that you're going to learn in this video, so get out that notepad and take some notes. Also, we have an exclusive chat with Jim Morris of Morris Sound Studio, which this is the studio that was responsible for recording, Was he's been recording for decades now, but recording a lot of the heavy metal bands and death metal bands back in the 80s, this area, the Brandon and Tampa area, was the metal capital of the world back in the 80s. Yeah, it absolutely seemed like that. and it, It's a who's who of the metal world when it comes to more sound recording. I mean, from, you know, Sabotage, you know, Obituary, Sepultura, Death, I mean... Siren. Oh, yeah, Siren, I think, stopped Siren. by years ago. Oblivion. Um, that's right. Oblivion. Nasty Savage. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, just, it's a who's who. It's really... And it was just the the mecca of of where to go if you were a metal band. You wanted to come to Morris Sound Recording and record with Jim and Tom Morris or Scott Burns, legendary metal producer. So we we're very lucky to call him a friend and to be able to work with him. Awesome. So we're definitely going to get into that later. But first, I want to talk about how this whole thing came about. You guys just released this album, Mer Mercenary's Fate. That's right. It came out October 4th on FHM Records in Germany, our good friend Frank Hernshaw and Holger Geinitz, um, super proud of the album. Yeah. And uh, I think it's one of the best things we've ever done and absolutely one of the best performances that this man has ever given. I, I think it's, it is by far the best album that we've ever done. I've been listening to it like literally nonstop uh, during my workouts every morning. Uh, but guys, what I wanted to bring you today is we wanted to kind of go behind the scenes a little bit. Talk about the recording process and also want to get to you know why you guys decided to mix and master where you did, which we're getting to that next. But tell me, uh, tell me how this actually came about. Like, what inspired you guys? Because I know you guys released uh, another album, Back from the Dead, kind of coming back from the dead after thirty years, right? Uh, but what inspired this album here? Well, Back from the Dead was released in twenty twenty, and that was. Um, we had such a good time getting back together again unexpectedly and performing it, Keep It True in Germany, yeah. that we were like, hey, we put all this work in, let's do an album. So we recorded it in 2019 and then released it in 2020. And then it was so well received that we were like, well, you know, why are we going to stop this train that's already in motion? We're having a good time. We've still got ideas. So I think it was at lunch. It wasn't, Frank was in town from Germany. And we were having lunch here locally, and the idea was brought up about doing another album. And, you know, we were like, well, you know, why we're not? on board. Awesome, man. Awesome, man. And you guys put this together. I mean, I know, I know Todd. Uh, again, you know, Todd, I'm going to have him on. We're going to talk about their guitar tones in another video. Uh, but he just started ripping out riffs, and you guys were all kind of writing lyrics together and just coming up with different ideas. I know you guys had probably like, what, 20 or so ideas that you narrowed down to 11 songs? Or I think there songs. was like 40. Yeah. Oh, man. Todd wow. is just a, a songwriting machine. He yeah. just was kicking them out. It was hard. It was hard to pick. Yeah, and this time Hal, our other guitarist, uh, just also just jumped in with both feet. There's maybe only one song on this that was purely one guitarist or the other. The rest oh, wow. were riffs that came together and then Hal and Todd would work together and then we would listen to all those riffs and say, okay, this one's sounding good and that's what we're talking about, like 40 different early song ideas that would come together and we're like all right let's focus on these and start to to build those up now during the recording process and this, i really want to dig into this um you know we all have our home studios uh i know you can go into a professional studio which we're going to talk about more sound in a second here in a couple of minutes uh but you know we all have our we all have the capability to record at home um how how did you guys put that together because ed you're the drummer doug you're the lead vocalist here uh, you know, of course, I've already talked to Todd and Hal. Again, we're gonna we're gonna meet with them at a separate time to go over their tones. Uh, but they were using the Kemper, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, the bass. How did all this come about? Like, how did you did you guys like record guitars first and you record drums? How did all that come together? It started with the riffs. That's okay. the that that was the foundation. And then you know, as Hal and Todd would would uh, take riffs and turn them into arrangements. You know, kind of kind of early arrangements. 
we all as a band would audition those and listen and see which ones inspired us and I think didn't we we even like sorted and then did our, our votes for our, like our top and then did like a, a bubble sort yeah, of we those did. you know yeah mm. and then I guess um, that, that's how we picked the exactly. songs we actually ended up with yeah Ooh, cool. yep. it was a unanimous thing yeah and then after that so that's the first step is which ones of these are really speaking to us which are not the best for this project awesome. and then um you know, from that point, it is we start to piece the, the songs together, you know, with our individual contributions. Doug is listening for, okay, what am I feeling? What kind of attitude? You know, that kind of thing. I'm listening for the beats starting to put together, okay, what am I feeling? I'll play along with those riffs and those arrangements and then start to lay down the actual tracks at my studio for the drums. And Todd and Hal will do the same thing in their studios for their for their rhythms. And I remember real quick too, I remember Doug, you were you were at my house one time, you were on the patio and uh, we were having some beers and you had your acoustic and this is before, of course, way before the album come out, but you're playing that riff from the instrumental on the album. So that was pretty cool. How did you come up with that, dude? I, I came up with that a long time ago yeah. and then I, I played it for Todd. I was actually, we worked on another song actually that uh, was going to be on 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 back from the dead and it was going to be called something else and it had it had uh lyrics and todd wrote lyrics and i wrote lyrics and we couldn't really you know decide on what we wanted i guess ed had the idea to make it into the instrumental that it ended up being and it turned out really well i think yeah because yeah, it was a great song yeah, it's a and song. and back from the dead even the way it came out already had over 60 there minutes. There was just way too yeah. much material. Yeah. For <laughs> so it. We, had, we had to ace some stuff off yes. of there anyway. Yeah. Even before the songs that didn't make the album that only made the CD, we had to can like, I think, three other songs near the end. We had to can a bunch more early on. Right. But that one was was so good that we're like, you know what, we don't, let's let that one come across, yeah. you know, for this new for this new album. And it's like, you know, let's do something different with it so that's why I like let's take it from an instrumental and make it more of a dramatic presentation of an instrumental so that's what we did with having dialogue yeah. in it that goes through the scenes that lead up to the album cover you know what you see on the on the cover of the album it was definitely different man I mean every song on the album uh, we were talking about this earlier it tells a story and it pulls you it kind of pulls you into that story so uh, is extremely just well written. Everything's just so well thought out in it. Now vocals, um, Doug. I know you started recording vocals. I think here in Todd's studio, but you guys merged over to Ed's studio to to do the vocal tracks, right? You know, I mean, Todd. Todd, I work, worked really well with Todd, yeah. but I think I think when it when it came down to the nitty gritty, Ed is a great vocal producer, and I think we work well together r recording Absolutely. on the vocals. I mean, we both have a lot of good ideas and a lot of input, so that's kind of how that that ended up being the way it was. Yeah, so basically it ended up almost like Todd did pre-production. Right. I was, I was going to say that. Yeah, with yeah, Doug. And then, and then I, my schedule had freed up at that point where, you know, I had come over and, and they're recording. It's like, it's like, you know what, let's go ahead and take this off Todd's plate because then yeah. he was also having to do his leads and stuff like that. And Doug and I got together over at my studio and it was phenomenal. Just, it worked out well. well. Yeah, just yeah. how we worked together, you know, and just immediately on the same page and from the very first song i forget which was it i am the wolf was it was that the first one we did i think together? so together and it once we did that we're like oh snap you know that was it this is going to be good <laughs> this is going to be good stuff that was awesome I mean, because that's one that i did i started over here right and there's some awesome uh awesome vocal melodies that you do throughout this thing man you get up there in some parts and it, mm -hmm. i don't know it's just it's just cool it gives me chill bumps when i'm listening to it uh now the bass guitar um what happened with the bass guitar? I know you guys, you mentioned you actually found somebody online to do the bass tracks for you. Right. I had talked to Greg um, as we were getting ready and ramping up. You're a regular album. bass player, yeah, right? Right, yeah. a regular bass player, Greg. And just with things that were going on with him and, okay. you know, availability. And plus, this was also a time when COVID was still kind of being weird. Yeah, yeah. And he has family members that are very... Uh, you know, vulnerable, like including his wife who had some, some serious issues as a, result, as a result of a surgery. And so he was very protective. So as we talked, he said, he said, you know, you can absolutely just go ahead and, you know, do it. I'm gr it's great that you're using uh, the instrumental song because I told him about that, that we yeah. wanted, you know, to do that. And uh, because he had a big, some of his best playing was actually 
on that song and so he was thrilled that it will get to see the light of day and it's it's a great contribution so with that in mind i'm like okay we we first thought about having um ryan who is the bass player in atomic opera another right. project that we've that we've worked from our old days um who's actually played with us live Yes, yeah, oh, and Ryan yes, has yeah. played with us live. Also, we had a, a couple of a show, at least one show, here locally where Ryan stood in for Greg again because Greg was unavailable. I did what you know we all do these days. Like, I mean, well, let me just go to Fiverr just to see because yeah. Ryan was going to do it, but it's like, you know, Ryan is busy himself, and True. you know, then Todd would have to take the time to record him, and I'm like, you know what? Let me just see if anyone's out there. And I went out there and I just put in metal, you know. Basis. Metal basis. The yes. first one that popped up that really caught my eye was Rich Gray. Rich Gray. And uh, and I watched his reel, his demo reel, and I'm like, okay, first of all, this guy is just insane what he's doing, <laughs> and he's the bass player for Annihilator and Eon Flux and you know some other bands. I'm like, wow, I can't believe that we have the opportunity to to do this. So let me engage with him, and I did, and reached out, and you know we talked. He's in England. So, you know, had him, I said, all right, well, have him do the first one. Let's see what he, he comes up with. And it was actually I Am the Wolf, which is the first one. Yeah, he's amazing. And he sent yeah. it back he, uh, just a couple days later, and it just blew all of our minds. We're like, <laughs> okay, this changes things because this yeah. is going to take it in an avenue. Because Greg, Greg is great, and he does, he has a very geezer butler kind of style. Rich has a completely different style and has a different you know, outlook on things. I would share mixes that were just the bass and the drums oh, yeah. to the guys. Just so it's like, you need to hear exactly what he did. I was blown away. I mean, both you guys. I think I played place. you one of those versions. You did, you did, yeah. Oh, you played, yeah. We were, we were on the yeah. patio one night. I was say, that was yeah. I and the Wolf, too. It yeah. was he was just yeah. so over the top on that. You said, hey, listen to this. This is just the bass part. I'm like, what is he even doing? <laughs> yeah. And, and the fact guys, that yeah. he did it, because, you know, Todd and Hal, they'll write some stuff where, you know, you know, they get some occasional finger twisting chord yeah. shapes in there and never once came back with a question of like, okay, what's he doing here? I would send him the stems, you know, yeah. so he could hear the guitars, here's the leads, here's the vocals, and here's the drums. And he would just come back and understand what was going on and augment it and add a whole different dimension to it. So. It was amazing, man. Um, Doug, I want to ask you real quick, dude, because you hit some pristine notes. You The vocals were phenomenal in this. Um, you and I both, none of us are young guys anymore. And a lot of guys our age and our age range, and we don't have to tell this on camera unless you guys want, but how have you been able to keep up your vocals? Because uh, a lot of folks in their younger years, they, they can sing one way, but as they as we age, you still you still have it. You know what I mean? Like how do well, you... You know, I, I warm up a lot. I have a routine that I, that I do daily, usually, especially when we're working on a project. Yeah. But I mean, a lot of that is we just was just spontaneous. Yeah, but I, just, I, I told him constantly as we were recording, I'd just be like, I don't understand yeah. how you're doing this, you know, because like, it, especially with the power and the the attitude of this album, you know, oh, yeah. it required that, that kind of you know that kind of energy and that a little bit of rasp. But and I'm sure we'll talk about we have an entire language. Of when we're recording, you know, <laughs> that helps to get the best performances because one thing that's that's I've, I really found, and we talked about this as we're recording, is a big difference between recording yourself yeah. and having someone else do it who's listening not only for, okay, is it proper what's going on, you know, are, are the right notes being hit, but is the right delivery coming through? Because when you're singing, it is very difficult to gauge, you know, the performance, the nuances of each one. But if I'm there in the booth listening and thinking, okay, okay, that was a great verse. See, you know what I'm capable of. Exactly. You know what the band needs. You know what the song needs. So, I mean, you, you're a great vocal producer. Oh, thanks, man. Well, it's, it's a team. It's an absolute 100% team. Yeah, we kind of fill in, we fill in each other's blanks. So, yeah, exactly. it's, it's a, good, a good working relationship. For recording yeah. vocals, it worked out really well. I, I see that and I hear that, and that's something for you guys to think about too. You know, when especially with vocals and when you're recording vocals, it is good to have that second ear, that other person uh, that's going to encourage you, but also just going to listen for the nuances that you're talking about. 
you know, both of you are like, okay, well, what does this song, what's going to really make this song pop? You know, anybody can sing and just sing the notes, but there's much more to just, okay, I hit the note. There's attitude, there's emotion that comes with that, and you, you put every bit of that into this album, man. So, yeah, it, <laughs> it was yeah, good, you man. You have to so, believe it, and that's the thing he did. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, that's before I went over to record, I would spend the day being putting myself in the song. In character, right? Yeah, especially for you know stuff like uh, "I Am the Wolf" and or "Welcome uh, to the Grave" stuff yeah. that "Welcome you to know. the Grave" and uh, what's that other one? The Slaughterbots. I like the Slaughterbots, <laughs> dude. That that that's a movie right there. The whole yeah, song. One is Man's just a Fight. That was yeah. another one. That's you know yeah. getting that performance out was, and we hit it early. I mean, it wasn't like we even warmed up. It was like out of the gate. It was like. Okay, you you know I'm feeling what you're doing. Some nights it was out of the gate. Sometimes well, yeah, but, but you have to come into it a little bit. But yeah. yeah, that was so rare though, and it was dead more... eyes crying in the rain. That's the one I was trying to think of. Oh, oh I really yeah. put myself oh, in in that song. And you had an audience. No, that's that true. I forgot about yeah. that. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, we had uh, yeah. The, our label owner Frank Hernshaw was oh, over wow. from Germany, and uh, had a friend you know with him, and so they came over for that session. And so that was even extra pressure, not to mention the fact that that song is, has dug bare, that's all you hear. It's not, you know, without even the band, it's just like, oh, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And he's having to yeah. sing and emote and do that Carry you know, in, in front of it. And, and it was just like, whoop, he did it. Right in front of your label, recording yeah, the track. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No pressure. Now, you, you, you guys said something about a language. You know, you, uh, you were going to talk about kind of a specific language you have when recording. What... Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, and this started with the last album. Okay. We that was where we kind of found the language, and we added to it as we went through because, you know, it's hard to describe. You know, it's like okay, sound angrier. You know, what does that mean? You know, what or that's not quite. I don't want you to be angry. I just need you to have a little more. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like you know, one of our. I know one of our. Popular ones is uh, there's a level of stank. Yes, it's just, yeah, we're on the stank. Mean it's like it. is 50 it have... or an eighty percent stank, yeah. or if it's right. if it's yeah. not so hard, maybe it's a twenty. Yeah. Maybe yeah. to pull back the stank a little bit, you yeah. know, depending exactly. on depending on the the application. But and you'll hear it because there's a range. You'll hear it. Doug will sing with clean voice yeah. sometimes, and everywhere between clean and full on Udo Dirk Schneider, you know, rasp, oh, yeah. depending on on you know what the song needs. And other things too, like I remember, you know, Shakespeare right. was added to it. That was the level of okay, how much drama, you know, am I going to yeah. bring? It's like, ah, what song is that? I, you know, I remember, you know, I remember that. Yeah, it, I forget which one. It was oh, it was uh, Queen of Sin. Oh yeah, it, it was you know because uh, there was it's a real and it dramatic was, kind some, of some lines where I'm almost using like an English accent. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Nice, nice. I mean, you don't you can't tell so much in the mix, but when it was isolated, it's like. Right. Can't, and it, I can't believe I did that. It's like that kind of thing, you know. Okay, we need a little bit. I need five percent more stank, you know. Yeah. Or okay, do this. Or you know. And there's sometimes too when something is just you're hitting a wall with something. It might be yeah. a word. It might be a oh, yeah. you know, something that we're and it might be something simple. And that's what becomes frustrating sometimes. It's like why is this word eluding me in the way I want to do it? So. We'd pivot. We'd you know adjust the lyric on the fly. Yeah, that's sometimes important. we would change the word completely. Yeah, to make it or the, flow. Say it in a, a weird way that it wasn't really the word, but it was. You know, just to make it make it fit. Like like mm. changing a common things I've seen you talk about, changing mm. the e vowel sound to an a. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's like instead shifting. of going, you know, you know, it's free. It's like free. You know, you yeah. do the free, a. Yeah. You yeah. know, because as long as you and you can curve it back into the a. And pull that E back into the end of it to kind of do it. But I'll tell you, though, there... We did a bunch of that, Yeah, too. but there's things on here that you think are studio trickery, but they're not. Like, they're I not. forget which one it is. It has a real long, extended, holding end, loud, and, yeah. and grasp it. It's 100%... You know, yeah, but that's, that was because Todd did one version oh, of it, and I had I had to yeah. I had to, I had to one up him on that one. <laughs> yeah, had a guide vocal in there. It's like, oh, Doug is like, okay, I'm not being outdone by the guitarist. <laughs> so, no. I remember in the beginning, I was cutting it, kept cutting it short, and I was like, mm -hmm. nope, nope, nope. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah, that kind of collaboration just and being able to being able to also a lot of it is is I think Doug, you probably agree, is not feeling self conscious like you weren't. 
worried about you know you know i'm not judging you it's like a team we you know we're exactly. out there and so it's like when i, I mean, you're, when you're I, making me better right you know, i think and when i would say something it wasn't like you know oh you're doing this wrong it's hey, like that's it's horrible like, yeah it's it's what are you, you know, doing how to make it better and we and yeah. and anytime something you know he'd lay down a verse that was just perfect it'd be like you know high five you know you know just oh, with the fist, fist bump. Yeah. yeah, fist bump. yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's the first because, fist bump of the night. Yeah. I remember that a lot of times. Be like, yeah. Because it just, when you get into that groove and you nail that one's done, something, it's like, I'm not even, we're not even going to, you know, do it. Because yeah. a lot of times, you know, with modern recording, we'll get several takes of a same line, a same verse, because that allows me the freedom as the editor to go back after the fact and pick the ones that are best. The you ones know, are best, okay, yeah. well, I like the attitude in this one, or I like the way. He said this word, you know, and this phrase and this one. And so I have, you know, a lot of choices. A lot of times there might be, you know, eight, ten passes yeah. where I have that ability to go in and, and really make it the best, you know, that it can be the best delivery. Because this is, you know, the recording. It's what people are going to hear and what people are going to judge. And, you know, we have the technology. There's, you know, there's no use putting the first thing you got out there it's like make it the so best true. you can be yeah i i must do a 80 to 100 takes literally on guitar solos because like okay exactly. i didn't like that one but now what i do is i just i get rid of the whole thing and redo it right. no, that's <laughs> so understandable. i probably shouldn't do that but yeah. it's, i think it's different with guitar there's not as much nuance as you have with words right you know and yeah. vocals I mean, there are a lot of times we just get rid of the whole thing oh there were absolutely <laughs> a times. few times and there are times when when Doug's you like, would no. lay something down right out of the gate that was like, we're not even doing another one. Let's just First move on. First fist bump of the night. Yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah. that's awesome. That's that's where the magic comes in recording is, is when, you know what, it came out. And even if it's not like perfect, perfect, I'm not saying that it wasn't, but sometimes you come out with something that it's not perfect, right? But the little nuances and the character added, it's like you're not going to ever replicate that right. again. You know, so yeah, that's the one <laughs> right there, and we just leave it. I yeah. wish I could remember some of the exact on some of the words that we changed the, the whole enunciation of to make it sound right in the, in, in the part. Right. But I, remember, I remember one of them was, was a, a lot. Uh, in Revenge of the Bastards. It was like it was originally, you know, for oh, 300 days we've been guarding yeah. this gate, and three was just not working for three. It's like, it's a that just doesn't fit there, you know. And Todd had written that lyric. I'm like, all right, we're just changing. We're going five, you but, know. Yeah. You know, it's not that's not germane to this lyric. It's it's right. yeah. So for 500 days, it's like that fits. It's a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of almost a year. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. It's a man. long time. So Ed, I almost forgot to talk about the drums. Yes, there are drums on the album, <laughs> there are, and they're there, real drums. I was there. I These was are there. definitely not fake drums. These are. This is well, Ed Aborn playing. Yes, you know. I played the drums. Now, yeah. see, that's the thing. There's, I mean, you know, these days, yes, there's acoustic drums, and then yeah. you have electronic drums, and a lot of times you have a, a electronic drums that are used in samples to augment, you know, acoustic right, right. drums. You know, for us and the budget we have and the fact that I'm recording myself doing it, I will usually record. I have a really nice electronic Roland kit. Okay. So I'll get the performances down with that. I'll listen to the song, start laying down the beats for the riffs and just being like, okay, this is what I'm feeling here. This is what I'm feeling here. And then, you know, bring it in and then dial in that drum sound, that perfect yeah. drum sound that I want after the fact. And that's the luxury we have of working with these, you know, in this new technology is to, you know, it's not just about getting up, having it a perfect drum sound in a perfect room. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, and dealing with that, it's like, no, I want the toms to have this kind of character. I want the snare to have this kind of character. When I do the drums, and you'll hear this in every song, is it's all about building the energy through the song yeah. for me. So it's, you know, I'll do things differently from, you know, a first verse sometimes to a second verse or, you know, just changing things up or backing backing out of it or at the end of a song going over on the beat and going from just, you know, just a regular beat to, to, yeah. to build it up. So I think that's important is not to let a, just have a song just be, Four minutes of you know living after midnight's beat. Yeah, you know, same thing all the way yeah, through. Yeah, it's just yeah. Not that that didn't sell millions of records for them. So right. who am I to say? But for me personally, I like to just to you know to build it. It's like when we record the choruses. It's like let's tweak it a little bit. Like you'll hear Doug change the lyrics, you know, on Soul Breaker from chorus to chorus a little bit yeah. just to be like you know. I like that. I yeah, like that a lot. Yeah, hallucinate then to manipulate and then the last one's annihilate. You add a little something every yeah. time. Make yeah. it interesting. You know, you take take. Give it that 
attention. It doesn't sound like a copy paste this course to the second exactly. one and so forth. You guys had a little bit of a different type of flavor, you know. Yep. Uh, but it, the drums are phenomenal in there, Thank dude. You, man. So I'm happy with you. You recorded this in your in your home studio. I know yep. you have a nice studio set up there. So. Yeah, yeah. Record awesome. the drums there, and then you know get everything ready in pre production, and then bring them in, and then Jim mixes those tracks that have been bounced out. I want to go now step into the mixing and mastering, and I'll be honest with you guys, you know. What you let me hear is the mix, you know, the pre-production. Pre yeah. uh, to me, that was album worthy. That was, but but you guys went to the next level with that, and you actually had uh, Jim Morris at More Sound, who, by the way, uh, More Sound. I've, we, we're going to share the interview with Jim Morris here coming up. That's uh, going to be towards the end, so hang around for that. Uh, but you guys decided to to go that route with it. Jim Morris is a legend. I mean, we, there's no two ways about it. He's good enough on, reason right there, yeah, right? Yeah. He's been on so many. He's done so much legendary work in music and metal and Morris Sound. We're just so lucky to have been here where Morris we Sound access to him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just yeah. the wizard of yeah. recording. Just legend. And and I know for me personally, you know, I've worked and we've been friends for decades. You know, all yeah. of us have been friends with Jim for, for decades. But for me personally, I've never had him work on something that has been a project that, you know, is a project I'm deeply involved in. It's always been through Todd project or other bands that that yeah. were going you know going through. Now Doug has recorded in the past, but it wasn't with Jim. I don't think. I think no, you were it was in with... like the B studio when uh, it was it was in 1987. Okay, yeah, we did like a five song pre production there. 87, right, yeah. which but I think I'm, is on was... uh, that the There's anthology. Something right? from oh, cool, something man. from that is on, recording is on there. I think at least one song. So yeah, so it was it was, you know, we're like you know what. And also for me personally, you know, I got the mixes together for those pre-production mixes and brought them to a point, but didn't do a lot to them. It was mainly setting levels and I put uh, some general reverb and delay just to kind of sweeten things up as we were listening to them. Yeah. But I kept it pretty much hands off. I didn't do any kind of deep mixing on it because I know I wanted to go in and let Jim do what Jim does, yeah. which is take, you know, those those raw ingredients and come up with something that is just amazing. I mean, he has you know he's forgotten more about audio, you know, recording and engineering than I'll ever know. And he's just so cool and you know such a good friend and a wizard, like Doug said. That we're like you know what he's funny too. Yeah. Oh, he's awesome. Yeah. Oh, he was hilarious. Right. <laughs> well, man, yeah. it's like it's going to be an investment, you know, but. It's going to be worth it because well, well worth it. What's going to come out the other yeah. side is going to be the best thing we've ever done, and this yeah. is the best material. It's the best songs. It's the best performances. It deserved it. It deserved it. And this is a situation, guys, where like you may be good at mixing your own stuff, or you may know somebody, but but if you want to really take it to that next level, you hand that off to the the person that's the absolute best at it. You know, yep. you performed your music, you wrote it. You're the best at that part. And I feel the same way. I'm, I'm working on something now. I am not going to mix that. I've mixed everything myself in the past. And, you know, you don't want to be your own weakest link. Right. And not that it would have been a weak link, because I, like I said before, and that's kind of why I asked why, I'm like, it sounded really great. You know what I mean? It sounded great what you guys had done up to that point. But, yeah, I, I totally under, But I just wanted you to say it in front of the audience here. I totally understand why you went with more sound on oh, yeah. that. We could have mastered it like that. It, yeah, it, it would have. It wouldn't yeah. have been bad. It I mean, wouldn't. Yeah. But it would have been. It would have been good. You know, like we did that with the last album. Right. You know, right. You know, I mixed it, and then we brought it to Jim to master. But you know, by the time you get to mastering, you're polishing. You can't adjust anything in right, the mix. Yeah, right. You know, you yeah. can do some minor adjustments to guitar tones and stuff by adjusting and compressing, you know, sp uh, specific frequencies. But it's a whole different thing when the mix is right. Jim, in, like, like Jim said, he said the mix is. My job is to do the mix so well that there's virtually nothing left to be done, you know, in the mastering other than just, you know, making sure that it is, it is glued together and, you know, in the, in the right, uh, you know, the right levels yeah. and things are, are sounding consistent from song to song. He has a yeah. great ear for metal, oh. too, and, and, and for our style of music and for our band. He is amazing. I'm going to share just a short clip with you guys. This isn't the Jim Morse interview. We're getting to that towards the end, but this is just a very short clip of, uh, of you guys working together behind the console. <laughs> Yeah, 
I forgot there was a little harmonic in there. What? I didn't... So that was pretty cool. <laughs> Jim is the best. Yeah, and uh, it was so cool just to be in there. I'm like, man, I could just like, you know, throw up a little bed and, and live here. See if he'll yeah. let my wife and I move in with him and I could just live in the studio. <laughs> yeah, just the I whole feel. It's yeah. steampunk meets Captain Nemo meets. Uh, oh, man, yeah. Yeah. Antique, antiquity. It's, it's cool. We could move into Todd's place here. This place is pretty cool. Yeah, he's got a real cool <laughs> I like to give you guys a tour of, uh, with Todd's school. Uh, he's got a guitar school here. We'll maybe we'll do a tour of that in another video. Who did your artwork, by the way? Because the artwork we were talking about that earlier. It's very, it's very cool. It's, it's not like the typical, like you said, it's not like the typical artwork. It just really there's a story behind. It. I keep going back to the entire album, every song. There's a story, and it really pulls you in in a way that's. It's kind of unusual almost. So tell tell us about the artwork and kind of how all that came about. Um, okay, so the actual artwork was done by uh, a man named Yannick Bouchard, who oh. is up in Canada. What a um, cool name, man. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's it's in French Canada. But a lot of the preliminary ideas came out of the head of, of Ed Abel. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, let me tell you about that because it's funny. Part of it happened in this room, and I'll share a picture with you, Jason. Oh, cool, that man. No one awesome. has that no one has seen, which is. Wow. Yeah, Todd about to execute Ryan, but I'll oh, explain man. that. We'll but, put that up on the screen here. So. But yeah, so it was, um, Yannick has done the album cover for the anthology package that oh, we cool. released bef right before we did Keep It True. Um, and then he did the artwork for the Back from the Dead. So we're like, you know, we love the work he did. You know, he, he did on those. He's, and he's great. Oh, he's amazing. And, you know, just like Jim or like we're working with Rich Gray. Yeah. You, when you work with talented people it just takes everything to a different level and you know when we saw how he realized the vision that we had for the album cover yeah. uh, it, we were just blown away um, so yeah the album cover itself is a um, you know it's a our, our lead character which looks suspiciously like Doug Lee as a younger man <laughs> he does look like a young Doug Lee <laughs> and, and Doug still looks younger yeah. <laughs> and what that is that's our character the Metro Mercenary kind of like you know yeah. Iron Maiden has their Eddie and that was our very first ever release in 1984 yeah. the Metro Mercenary single 7 inch and that character kind of picked up in Dead of Night one of the earlier yeah. demos and then S Blade Serenade which yeah. was on the Back from the Dead album. It's the Quadrilogy. The Quadrilogy. The quadrilogy. The four the quadrilogy. Part Trilogy. Well, I can yeah, say that. Todd quadrilogy. Says. There we go. Yeah. And um, so yeah. this song, you know, I really wanted to make it kind of just, you know, bookend the story and pay you know, homage to that first debut single over 40, you know, coming up on 40 years ago. 40 years, dude. 40 years, I know, it's crazy. Wow. The story of the song... Uh, a mercenary's fate it you know tells what happens he was a mob enforcer and yeah. you know spent a lot of time killing people and doing bad things back in the day um but he got too powerful and the mob leaders were like okay got it he's too much you know we got to get rid of him so that's what you see on the on the front of the album cover here which is you know which i'm sure you can show I'll oh yeah, send we'll you the show. Picture. yeah yeah we'll show and uh there's metro mercenary on the ground with the s blade you know his weapon of choice there yeah. on the ground and he's just kind of he knows it's about to go down the two assassins are getting ready to take him out but turns out you know he goes to hell to pay for his sins but Ooh. the side of good came down and like wait a minute not so fast it's a comeback yeah we realize that yeah he deserves to be here but we could use somebody with his skills to take out the guys who he was working for so he got a reprieve and a redemption to come back and you know take out those people the human traffickers of the world and yeah, so, yeah. people who are Let's just out, you know sure. yeah the people who are just pulling strings behind the scenes yeah. of global world powers and stuff we're you know? turning things around so this yeah. could be like a like a netflix or amazon series or <laughs> something like that <laughs> got some more questions for you guys we're going to wrap things up with those questions hang around for that because i these are important questions i have for you before we do that guys i want to showcase this very short uh chat with jim morse at more sound guys, i am here with very famous jim morse of more sound studio we are recording the, well, we're mixing and mastering uh, Siren's new album. So, dude, just a pleasure to meet you. Yep. Well, it's nice to be met. Because <laughs> that means I'm vertical. That means it's vertical, I'm yeah. vertical, it's good, you know. That's the plan. Of course, I don't know, this, this, this metal stuff might kill me. 
The metal stuff might kill you know, us all, man. I don't know. There was a few notes that Todd played that slayed me. Oh, Todd did have some awesome <laughs> notes. <laughs> well, Todd, thank you for, for letting me come in and play, hey, man. Hey, well, you know. I um, really appreciate it. You know, I uh, hope you enjoy the, the facility here. It's kind of a funky, cool place, but... It's a very cool place. It's sort of like... Uh, well, I'm not going to tell you what my wife calls the place, but because I'm sure this is a family tube. It's a family tube, <laughs> right? Yeah. Hey, you guys don't care, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, no, so. no. It's uh, this is fun. I mean, these are these are some friends of mine from way back, and so this is a a labor of love doing this yeah, for you, sure. You guys I mean, go back to the '80s, you know. Well, Ed is the Ed is the Ed is the guy who wrote the first Morrison website. He's Ooh. also the guy that showed me, Jim, there's this thing called an internet. <laughs> and he's the one that showed it to me. He's yeah. the one that, I went over to his house and he said, see this picture on my computer? This lives on a server in Maryland. I'm like, why? <laughs> Well, Why do we need to live on a server? <laughs> he says, no, you don't understand. This is going to change the world. I'm like, Ed, you are smoking some stuff. There's no way that some <laughs> server in Maryland is going to change the world. Yeah, how's it going no, work? no, it's not going to. People are going to use everything on this internet. Right. I'm like, no, they're not, Ed. You're just drummer. This, this was so long ago, we both had hair. Yeah. That's how well, long ago yeah. this was. A lot of hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, yeah, you might have had hair too. I had hair back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I wish right. I still had it. It have you know. All right, well, I think Todd has it all. Actually, yeah, yeah, Doug has yeah, it all. Yeah, yeah. Doug has a lot of it. Yeah, I think most of my hair is in a landfill somewhere. <laughs> you know, and somewhere in Hillsborough County, yeah. I think. No, but I tell you, this is, and I told Jim when we started this, this has been a dream of mine to yeah. record here at Morris Sound and to work with Jim for decades because. Back in the day, Morris Sound was, even then, was the place to go. It was like, that's where the pros would go. And all the yeah. stuff that we loved, the sabotages and all the bands that were ahead of us, you know, from our area, it was like, man, we want to sound like that. But, you know, unfortunately, for budgetary constraints, we were over at, it, you know, our friend's 8-track studio off of Nebraska. <laughs> and oh, uh, But, so it's a dream come true to be here and to see him do his magic. And he literally is doing magic on all these songs. So. That's fun. Yeah, it's good, cool. it's good, cool. good songs, really great songs, yeah. good recordings, and uh, this is real. I mean, this is, uh, and we're blazing through this stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And we're ahead of schedule, but we won't stay that way yes. if I keep talking on yeah, the tubes. Right. That's true. So, <laughs> so thank you, Jason. <laughs> pleasure meeting thank you, Jim. Man. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you, thank, thank you, you, brother. Thank you so that was a privilege to meet Jim Morse and chat with him in person. That was really cool. <laughs> yeah, Jim's so cool. Yeah. So guys, um, you know, is there anything? I know we're gonna have more videos, more content coming up uh, with Siren. Again, I'm gonna meet with Todd and Hal. We're gonna talk about the guitar tones they use for Siren. We're gonna go into detail with that and just talk to them about that process. And uh, of course, I want to have you guys on the channel more too, uh, maybe individually, maybe together, who knows? You guys tell us what you want <laughs> and leave, awesome. it, leave it in the comments. We'd love to do it, yeah. But yeah. do you guys have anything uh, you'd like to, to end with here that we haven't covered anything? Doug, I wanted anything? to say there was a lot of throwbacks in the album cover to earlier days and earlier oh, yeah. stuff. I mean, yeah. you gotta look for them, but that, and there's a riff in a okay. Mercenary's Fate that's kind of a throwback to the original Metro Mercenary Oh, riff. that's cool, that's yeah. cool. So, you know, yeah, paid homage to homage. that right in the middle was the the original riff from Metro Mercenary and then done with a little bit of a twist. Not not yeah. overdone, yeah. just a just a yeah. taste. Yeah. yeah, taste and pull it back, right? You know? Yep. So what's next, guys? What what are there any I know this album just came out, so we were you know, we're promoting that and getting that out there. By the way, guys, there are links for their album uh, in the description of this video, or you can just type in the band Siren, A Mercenary's Fate. Type in Siren, A Mercenary's Fate. I know there's some other sirens out there. I don't know what they are, but Siren, A Mercenary's Fate, that's going to be their latest album. Type that into your uh, streaming platform. Uh, you guys also have CDs for sale as well. I'll have those links in the description of this video here, guys. So do, do check that out. Support this band. It's an amazing album. But uh, again, guys... What is next, or have you guys thought that far? Will the vinyl be out after the first of the year? Is that the, the, oh, the vinyl. Yeah, the possibility here is the vinyl is going to be out in time for Keep It True in April. So that's April 23. Sometime next year. Yeah, So because vinyl production in the world is so messed up. It takes, oh, man. It takes a year sometimes to get a vinyl made, you wow. know, especially wow. you know, in Europe. So, um, but the CDs are available now. You can get them in the U.S. directly from us. You can get them internationally from our label, FHM Records. Cool. Um, it's on all the, the streaming platforms. 
for you know wherever you stream your music um, and uh, as I mentioned in the link you can get a hold of us see our Facebook page which is our kind of like our hub for news and other events and I mean as far as what's next you know right now it's all about this album we want to push it and get as much attention as we can and hopefully you know, if we can perk up some ears, maybe of some of the festivals, you know, in Europe, we would love yeah. to go back. I'm, I'm sure we'll do a video for, we you know, need some videos. Album. Yeah, and I hope you guys, I would love to see, and I know sometimes this might sound like a pipe dream, but but if some big movie or some show or something like that picks up one of your songs and throws it in oh, there, you know. that would be incredible, yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. I would say stranger things have happened. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know? Literally stranger but things. But I, I would love to see something like that happen for you guys. Doug, and I, I know you're working on a solo project Yeah, as well, it probably won't so. be out before the end of the year, but sometime yeah. next year. I'm back at work on it yeah. now. I mean, I had to take a hiatus from that to do. Yeah, it's a lot of work to do a full My bread album, and butter. So. It is, With it my is. siren band, yeah. so... It is a lot of work, but we'll be talking more about that later as that as that comes, you know, as that starts to come out. Guys, it was a pleasure. Um, Absolutely, man. Love you guys both, and uh, guys, thank you so much for, for watching our video here. Uh, remember, the link is in the description of this video. Go check Siren out if you haven't listened. Again, it's been my workout album for the past couple of weeks here, so do check that out. Guys, thank you once again. Until next time, keep it metal. Guys, we have got an awesome video for you today. I am sitting here with a great Doug Lee and Ed Ape. I f***ed that up. <laughs> <laughs> I mispronounced. I was going to say your last name and it merged into your first name somehow. I don't know how anyway, so maybe that'll be a blooper. I didn't introduce you yet, did I? You did. You did. You said Doug Lee and Ed Ape. Oh, crap. <laughs> All right. <laughs> can we get a We're, professional? Is yeah, there a professional can... interviewer now? <laughs> there's there's <laughs> no professional.